What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be talking about the gunsmith changes that are coming to Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. And presumably this will also carry over to Warzone 2, but that isn't confirmed at this point. We really didn't get any specific information on Warzone 2. Now just in case you aren't aware, I was able to attend a pre-reveal event for Modern Warfare 2, and in this we got a presentation where they went over many of the aspects of the game, and one of those aspects was a brief look at the gunsmith and while we weren't able to record the event, I don't have any screenshots or images from this, and even if I did, I wouldn't be allowed to share them. I was pretty quick with sketching this into my notebook, and I recreated an example of what the gunsmith looks like, at least at this stage in the game. Because that's another thing to point out here, there's still plenty of time for adjustment with development, so what you see here today may not be exactly what we see at launch. They may still be tweaking things a little bit in the background. But it should at least give you an indication of the direction they're going with the gunsmith, because it's quite different this time around. And without further ado, here it is. This is the recreation of the image that I saw and sketched down in my notebook. And it should give you a general indication of what the attachment structure is going to look like. So with this, the first thing you might notice is we have two different sections of attachments. We have the regular attachments up top, and then at the bottom we have weapon parts. So let's focus on the top part first, these are the attachments. And with this, there are six different categories, at least in the image that we saw. We have the muzzle category, underbarrel, laser, ammunition, optic, and rear grip. And out of these six categories, you can choose three of these attachments. You can't choose all six, there are some trade-offs here. We're not playing Call of Duty Vanguard, and I think that's excellent. And then on top of that, we have our weapon parts section, which is down below, and this includes our barrel, our magazine, the receiver of the gun, as well as the stock. And with this, as far as I can tell, based on the images they shared with us, I believe you can select one of each of these parts. There was no indication that you could only choose like one or two of them or anything. It looks like you have to choose all four of these parts. And therefore, we effectively get seven attachments on our gun with the new Modern Warfare 2 gunsmith. And honestly, I kind of like the look of the structure of this, because when you look at the attachments, most of those attachments up top, these are the things that have like minor stat impacts, where you maybe fill in the gaps a little bit if you're just trying to buff the gun in one area or give some extra little benefit to it. Whereas the weapon parts, these ones really fundamentally change how the gun performs and they have a much larger impact on the gun. So at least at first glance, my initial impressions of this is, yeah, I'm down for this. I like this structure, it seems good. I like the idea of still having some trade-offs available as well. You don't get to pick an attachment for every single attachment slot, which I think was a very bad thing for Vanguard. So this does have me quite hopeful and excited for at least this aspect of the gunsmith. Now another thing you might notice, on the bottom left, there was a button that said go to firing range. So directly from the gunsmith, it looks like you can just click on that button and you load into a firing range and you can test out the gun immediately in a firing range setting. And I think that also sounds incredible. We didn't actually get a chance to look at the firing range unfortunately, but that does excite me with a gunsmith system. Now having said that, something that I didn't see with this particular iteration of Gunsmith, keeping in mind we just saw static images of this, we didn't actually get to go through the menus and adjust things for ourselves, I didn't see any indication of having advanced stats displayed, where it shows like exact damage values and exact like recoil values for instance, like we've been seeing in Cold War as well as Vanguard. So I'm hoping that's something that's just available in a different menu, like when you select individual attachments like it currently is in Vanguard and Cold War. Or perhaps they just don't have it added to the gunsmith yet, and it's planned to be included at some point down the road. I just wanted to mention this because I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions surrounding it, and unfortunately at this stage, I just don't have an answer to that. So there we go, that's the basic general structure of the gunsmith this year for Modern Warfare 2. However, there was a bit more regarding gunsmith that they showed off for us, and I'm going to tell you guys right up front, I'm a little bit nervous and skeptical about what I'm about to show you here. One thing they showed off was the ability to tune individual attachments for a gun. And the example image that they showed for us was barrel tuning. So you select your barrel, and then from there, with that specific barrel, you can tune various elements of the barrel. 
And in the menu that we saw, there were two primary sliders. One of the sliders was heavy versus light. And on the heavy side, you have recoil control. On the light side, you have aim down sight speed. So you basically select which direction you want this to go and how heavy in which direction. So if you want maximum recoil control, you can do that, but you're gonna be sacrificing a lot when it comes to aim down sight speed. Or if you wanna tone that down a little bit and find a happy middle ground, you can do that as well. So that was one slider. And then the other slider was long versus short. And with this one, the long side had to do with aim walking movement speed and the short side had to do with aiming stability. So you can either strafe really, really quickly, but your gun is gonna have a lot of idle sway. It's gonna be bouncing around a lot as you're moving and strafing. So it might be great for mobility purposes and strafing around corners quickly, but you'll sacrifice your ability to hit targets at longer ranges. Whereas if you go on the short direction with this, you're gonna have more aiming stability, but you won't be able to strafe as quickly. And normally this is something you do by selecting different attachments rather than tuning the attachment itself. And this is what makes me a little bit nervous about a system like this. I worry that this is becoming overly complex and I really don't like customization systems that allow you to tune too much on a weapon. I've talked about this a little bit with Vanguard, but I'll say it again here because I have the same concern with the ability to tune individual attachments. If you give players too much control over turning the gun into whatever you want it to be, I feel the guns can lose a lot of their character, and I feel this can reduce gameplay variety because instead of having to adapt your gameplay slightly to adapt to the strengths and weaknesses of the gun that you're using, now you just adapt the gun into exactly what you want it to be so it fits your already established playstyle perfectly so you don't have to make any gameplay adjustments. I much prefer systems where you do have to learn how to play to the strengths and weaknesses of a gun. And while you might have a little bit of control over those strengths and weaknesses through your customization, I think that should only go so far. Additionally, with having extra complexity, I do feel this is going to make things a little overwhelming for a lot of players out there that would rather just look at the pros and cons of their attachments, pop them on as they see fit, and feel confident in their choices because the choices are quite simple. Whereas when you have so much complexity, I feel like there's always going to be that thought that I'm not quite using the optimal build. There's always some other fine tuning that I can do to make this just flawless for me. And I don't want to be constantly second guessing every little individual weapon attachment balancing decision that I make here. Now, at the end of the day, I haven't actually had a chance to hop in and really play with this system and see how much this actually affects each of the individual attachments. Perhaps my concerns are a little bit overblown and it won't be as bad as I fear that it could be. So time will tell on this. I just wanted to express the fact that I'm a little bit nervous about this particular decision. But one final thing I wanted to talk about in today's video is less about gunsmith and more about how you unlock weapons and attachments. And again, with this, keep in mind, we just got a very brief overview. We didn't actually get to dive in and have a look at the entire system for ourselves. But they are changing up how we're unlocking weapons and attachments. With this, you have a weapon platform, and then through that weapon platform, there is an unlock tree that you follow, where you unlock attachments for any gun that fall under that platform, as well as essentially new variants of that gun that are built off of the same platform, but are technically a different gun. So what they showed for us here was an M4, which is your base sort of platform here. That's something that you unlock through like normal unlocks. And then they had an unlock tree available. On one direction of that unlock tree, we had an M16. And then on the other branch, we had 458 SOCOM. Then after the 458 SOCOM, there was an LMG variant based on the M4 platform that you could unlock. So it's a brand new gun, but based off of the M4 platform. So you unlock it by leveling up your M4 rather than just unlocking it through leveling up your character. And what they described in this presentation is once you unlock an attachment for a weapon platform. So if I unlock an attachment for an M4, that attachment is now unlocked for any other M4 platform weapon. So even that LMG that's based off of the M4, if I unlock a laser sight on the M4, I also unlock it for that LMG simultaneously. And this does sound quite interesting. Again, I didn't get to see the whole system. I can't share a super deep or strong opinion on this at this point, but I at least like the idea that they're toying around with changing up how they unlock items. And I think with the overwhelming attachment unlocks we've seen in the past three years, this could lighten the load up a little bit by unlocking attachments for an entire weapon platform rather than each individual gun in the game. 
But with that, that is going to wrap it up for this general overview of the gunsmith and how it's going to be structured in Modern Warfare 2. And this is where I want to hear from you guys. First up, what do you guys think about the general structure, that gunsmith image that I showed you? What do you guys think about the fact that we can't choose every single attachment, but we can have effectively seven attachments on our gun? Then, what do you think about the idea of tuning individual attachments? Do you think that's a good idea or maybe a bad idea? And then finally, what do you think about unlocks and progression, where you unlock through a platform of weapons rather than each weapon being its own individual thing with its own individual attachment unlocks? Just let me know all of those thoughts as well as any other gunsmith hopes in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.